Jesus explains discernment, worship, and glimpses of heaven. May 8, 2015. Words from Jesus to Sister Claire, spoken by Jackie. The Lord bless us all with clear discernment and understanding tonight. I came into prayer through worship and said to the Lord, It's so beautiful dancing with you, Lord. You are clear and present to me. And why not? This is practice for our wedding dance. For the real event? Yes, my love for the real event, soon to come. Forgive me, Lord, I'm getting the chitters with the time getting closer. Yes, I know, me too. Really? Yes, really. Don't you think that holding my bride in my arms, knowing she will soon be with me for eternity, would give any man in love the jitters? I suppose. Oh, Claire, you and all my brides have no idea how much you are loved, honored, and respected. Not even a clue. I guess not. Well, it's beyond your wildest dreams. Yes, I try to limit my dreams. I don't want to get out there in La La Land. Oh, I'll take you to La La Land. You always do, but at least it's safe with you, and not with my foolish girlish imaginings. It is truly blissful and heavenly with you. You are far too timid. Timid? Yes, timid. Well, you are always right, so I guess I'll just have to agree with you. Oh, you are timid, all right. I have to meet you not halfway, not two-thirds of the way, but 80% of the way. You are so timid. You mean others are bolder in reaching out to you than me? Oh, yes, much bolder. Wow, I used to be so bold. What's happened to me? You married a man that turned the wild March hare into a sweet, domesticated little bunny. I love bunnies. I know, that's because they are timid like you. Okay, and fawns. I love deer and fawns. See, there you go again, timid. But I also love lions and tigers and cougars. But I guess because I see them as cuddly in heaven. So, you've proven your point. I am timid. Well, my sweet spouse, what would you like to talk about? You and I? Oh.
What will marriage in heaven be like with me? That's what I want to talk about. We will never be apart. You mean physically or spiritually? Spiritually. But we are never apart now. Yes, but now you cannot always touch in with me. You have trouble focusing. Not in heaven. That will be a thing of the past. The very moment you touch me with your thoughts, I will be there before you. Wow, I like that. But won't I be a pest? You will learn propriety. That is, being united with me and wanting attention will be two different things. You will be so filled with me that touching in will not be so necessary. You will be drawn to worship and lingering in the sweet bliss of our presence in worship. We will spend lots of personal one-on-one -on -one time together, lots of it. Going everywhere together, rock climbing, hiking, horseback riding, picnics, canoeing, flying, swimming. Oh, we are going to have a grand time and I've so much to show you. But isn't that frivolous in light of the work to be done here on earth? You must come to know me more thoroughly, so that my presence can get stronger and stronger through you to others. You will bring me to them, and the better you know me, the better you will bring me to them. Besides, recreation is important. Recreate opens your perspective on life, allows you to rejoice in the bounty and variety I have created for you just to enjoy. You see, this is one way we show our love for one another. We create something for the one we love. We cherish their reaction and the joy they find in it. But I know you are graduating to people. You are being to find all your joy in them. Yes, this is beautiful and praiseworthy and very much like me. Every soul has a journey to make through things created, even people, as they travel to me alone. I know that you would be happy in my broom closet, so I've built you a palace. Is that such a great thing for me? I think not. It is but a minor token of my love for you, which goes way beyond created things. It goes all the way to Calvary. Oh Lord, don't say that. I don't want to think about your suffering for me. I know, my love, but sometimes that is the only appropriate gift I can give you. And you do understand that in suffering for others, you prove the sincerity of your love. Yes, I do, Lord. Well then, remember my love for you and each and every soul goes back to Calvary. Now getting back to heaven, there are dimensions of pleasure and awareness in heaven that you have yet to experience. One you did experience the night I visited you and translated you out of the kingdom of darkness and into my glorious light. Oh my, that was quite an event, an ecstasy of body and soul that lasted 45 minutes and defies description. Yes, there are dimensions like that in heaven, where you feel that wonderful all the time. Oh my goodness, that would be pretty distracting.
Not really. You learn to function in that state and everything you touch receives a portion of that bliss. Oh, you have no idea what is waiting for you. The oneness of all creation and how we communicate the love for each other interdimensionally. What does that mean? Well, a plant communicates on one dimension, a cat on another, a rock on still another. But the love that holds all of creation together is binding between species. In other words, you can speak to all of creation and be understood, and they can speak back to you, and you will understand. And in the end, all are giving glory to me. O oh my, all praise and honor and glory to you, Almighty God. Yes, we will be together in worship, continually in worshipful bliss. All of my creation is united to me in a blissful praise. You've just never experienced anything like it, except perhaps the night I visited you, and fleetingly in times of worship. You've been transported out of yourself into the heavenless with me. Wow, Lord, this is so amazing. May I just stop right here and breathe it in just for a moment? Just for a moment turned into an hour-long nap. Jesus whispered, I'm still here. You mean you didn't get tired of waiting for me? Oh no, I was right here with you, by your side. Sometimes I just want to be close to you, Claire. In that way I can enjoy my creation, even when she's struggling with her faith in things to come. Oh, I can't keep anything from you. I'm really sorry. I hate it when I question what you've so faithfully told me. You can't help it. You are being buffeted. I rebuked them, Lord, because I thought that's what you wanted me to do. But I should have asked you to send them away. You have the power. But I'm also enjoying the battle between you and them. I see that little crack way down deep inside your vessel, and they see it too. Suddenly I saw myself as a large water vessel, and at the very bottom there was a light coming in through a crack. Oh Lord, how do I get rid of this? Worship. Lots and lots of worship. So I went back into worship for probably a good hour or so, and during worship an angel came and opened my eyes so I could see that I was in the heavenly court praising God with the angels and saints. Then Jesus came and stood before me. He was wearing a red robe and he looked into my eyes. Don't you believe me, Claire? I need you to believe. Yes, Lord, I believe you, and yet there is something tugging at me deep in my gut, calling everything into question, saying, none of this is true, you've been deceived, that's why it won't wash. This is your gut speaking, pay attention to me, aren't I always right? Now I see tears flowing down his cheeks. How do I get rid of this damnable spirit of unbelief, Lord? I'm so used to seeing something and verifying it with my gut-level feeling. How do I deal with this opposition? 
My faith tells me one thing, and my gut level perception is going against it. What do I do? Please send me some help. I can't do it on my own. He kissed my forehead. Just an Ezekiel returned from his errands, and he sat with me and prayed to help me discern what was going on. He told me that the Lord was pleased with me, that I'm in his will, and this other thing is a distraction to take me away from the rest of my work. It did just come up out of the blue and overtake me. Silly me. I asked him, what do we do if time continues to drag on and the Lord has not come yet? He said, we just carry on with our work. There's lots to do. I know the one thing I'm sure Jesus has told me, since he has confirmed it over and over again, is when Miami falls, the rapture will happen directly after that. But this nagging God-level feeling, what is it about? Ezekiel said, set it aside, wait on the Lord, it will get resolved. This is discernment 404, new levels, new devils. I went back to worship and the Lord began speaking to me. You're going to have to wait on me, beloved. That is the only resolution. I will make it plain and clear, but this is a suffering. Wait on me. In the meantime, I would say that you do have faith, but you are being tested. Hold fast to what you know in your heart and set the rest aside. Very quickly now, I will make the truth plain to you in such a way that you can receive it without wavering. Stand. And when you have done all, I say stand, because faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. That's Hebrews 11.1. 1. You have the conviction of things not seen, don't you? Yes. Then you are being toyed with. This is a distraction, just as your covering said it was. Haven't I always given him the wisdom to carry you through? Yes, Lord, indeed you have. Okay then, hold fast to what he has told you and let it wash. Thank you, Lord. I have a peace about this now. As I told you, you were being toyed with. Keep your eyes on the work at hand. You see, when you are making progress, the enemy tries to erect barriers to slow you down. Sometimes, when you can't resolve these things on your own, rather than continue to bang your head against the wall, it is best to set it aside and carry on. Then later things will become clear, but when you enter into a struggle to get all the answers now, you get derailed and the important things that are waiting for your attention don't get addressed. So carry on, my love. You are very pleasing to me and those kings in your faith are nothing more than distractions blown out of proportion in order to stop your forward motion. Which, by the way, they did. For how many hours? Six? So you see, they succeeded. Now you know better. Don't let them do this again. And for all my brides, I say to you, when you hit some kind of irreconcilable issue that begins to draw all your attention to itself, you may very well assume that the enemy has deliberately done this to throw you off. One indicator is that you were doing just fine before. Everything was going smoothly and your faith was in place and you were at peace. 
then all of a sudden you begin to have doubts, serious doubts, that take you away from the matters at hand. You begin to obsess over them and come to a completely confused standstill. That is demonic. You struggle not against flesh and blood, but spirits of the air, lying spirits sent to confuse and cast out, to erode faith and cause you to stumble. But I said the binding prayer. Aren't they included in that? Remember when you came back to prayer after a break, I nudged you to say it again. Oh. And you didn't. Bingo. But even beyond prayers, my beloveds, even beyond that, if you come up against something that seems unresolvable at the moment, don't allow yourself to be locked into a struggle with it. This is most definitely a temptation meant to derail you. So now you are free, my dear one. Move on. There is so much for you to do. I give you all my blessing and grace now that you will be resolute in waiting for me. Add to that a careful examination of dynamics that might frustrate or hinder your faith. Be on guard against those who would derail your patient endurance and in all things continue in the hope I am imparting to you this night. I love you all dearly. The table is set. The food is prepared. Soon we will be seated at the banquet together. Soon. <laughs>